welcome to Mobility Outlook, Mr. Ram. I truly appreciate you taking time to speak to us. Really lovely to talk to you. Thank Thanks you. for uh, inviting me to speak to you. Thank you. So we'll start off with uh, if you could give us an update on on business overall, right? Uh, from what emerged out of the COVID time to what it is now, to how do you look at the future? If you could give us an update on that. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite optimistic. Uh, COVID was a difficult time and uh, everyone around the world faced it. All of our companies faced it, employees faced it. But I think we have recovered uh, out of COVID uh, quite strongly. We have emerged as a better company, a stronger company, a company which has used the time to develop and introduce many new products. The market which was uh, almost 50% of what it was uh, in 2020 mm -hmm. is starting to bounce back okay. and we think 2023 will be a better year. Okay. And moving forward, uh, I think uh, India is at a very uh, critical junction. Mm -hmm. I think we are at an inflection point, a kind of point where which China was in, in the late 90s, early 2000s, where okay. they had 10 or 15 years of sustained growth. Right. I think India is at that kind of inflection point. Right. And uh, uh, Cummins uh, Group is very, very optimistic uh, that uh, this will be a good time to uh, expand and grow the business. Okay. Okay. From the technology perspective, Mr. Ram, you know, how do you see this transition taking place? And you know, from moving from ICs, uh, of course, like you said, diesels constitute a large part of your business, right? But you're moving to different technologies. How do you see this transition taking shape in the coming years? Thank you, thank you. That's a that's a great question. Uh, Cummins has been looking at the transition of technologies for now over twenty years, and uh, we have come up with uh, a program which we call Destination Zero. Right which gets us to zero carbon emissions by 2050. Mm -hmm. India, of course, is planning to get to zero carbon by 2070. Right. But we don't think this is going to be a cliff event that, you know, something happens and by 2050, mm -hmm. just uh, it just transforms overnight. It's not going to happen that way. It's going to happen in what we think are three phases. The current phase between now and uh, 2030 where existing technologies get better. Okay. Like in the diesel space, the emissions are getting tighter. We went from BS3 to BS6, mm -hmm. and in April, we'll go to OBDC of BS6. Right. To give you a heuristic, a diesel engine in BS6 with the BS6 diesel fuel is more carbon efficient for the country as compared to an electric vehicle with 70% thermal energy okay. in it. All right. So already we can make a change today mm -hmm. by using the cleaner fuels. We can also take the existing fuels and blend it with biodiesel. We can put ethanol right. uh, in it and we can make the difference from carbon neutrality mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. So between now and 2030, we see the technologies such as uh, LNG, CNG, okay. uh, ethanol blends, biodiesel to supplement what is happening uh, in diesel. Mm -hmm. Then comes a period between 2030 to 2040, 2045, which we call the messy middle. Okay. That's the time when multiple technologies will compete with each other. The core uh, diesel technologies will start to dwindle a bit. Uh, LNG and uh, CNG will start playing a bigger portion uh, in the mix of things mm -hmm. and technologies that we are introducing today, technologies such as hydrogen internal combustion engines uh, as well as hybrid vehicles as well as uh, fuel cells and battery electric vehicles will start to uh, make some gains All right. and then the time between 2040 and 2050 mm -hmm. is when uh, we think we can get scale in the country. Okay. Scale in terms of volume, scale in terms of infrastructure, mm -hmm. whether it be hydrogen production infrastructure, whether it be battery production infrastructure, whether it be hydrogen tank production sure. infrastructure, sure. the whole infrastructure to be able to support the cleaner, greener technologies will 
will take at least a decade to get uh, set up. Mm. And we think that's the time between 2040 and 50 when that scale can happen. Mm. And we have made a commitment as Cummins mm. uh, to be a zero carbon company by 2050. Right. India, of course, has a plan to get there by 2070. So the technologies will be available to us long before okay. that. And certainly if the infrastructure can get ready at a faster pace, we will be able to move at a faster pace as right. well. Right. Like you said, you know, the key would be the preparedness of not just, I mean, Cummins will be prepared, but the industry, the entire ecosystem will have to be prepared. That's correct. Right. Uh, so, considering the government's vision and the government's sort of uh, stated commitment to go carbon neutral by 2070, uh, how do you look at the ecosystem shaping up? Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, we are seeing the government put its, you know, uh, money where their mouth is, uh, in the sense that they have announced uh, quite a few schemes to help uh, industry, especially schemes like the PLI scheme. Recently, the sure. PLI scheme for hydrogen was announced. Earlier, the uh, PLI scheme for batteries was announced. They are planning to announce a PLI scheme for uh, electronics uh, and uh, local investment. So, the, the government sees that this migration will not happen uh, without core infrastructure being set up. And so we are seeing the infrastructure being set up because uh, the other portion of our business, which is not connected to mobility, is connected to you know producing products for infrastructure. And we are seeing that there is uh, core work being done to set that infrastructure up. Okay. So I'm pretty confident that the government uh, has a clear vision of where they want to get and they are backing that up with investments to make that happen. What's going to drive the next phase of growth for Cummins in India? So there are multiple uh, areas uh, where Cummins is growing. Uh, first, of course, uh, as we are moving, moved from mechanical technologies to electronic technologies, Cummins has uh, innovative products. So we are introducing many of those products uh, into the India market. We are localizing those and that is helping us penetrate markets and segments it's uh, helping us uh, win more customers and and produce more products within a company's uh, ecosystem okay we are getting converted from a pure just a combustion supplier to a full powertrain supplier so earlier we used to sell only an engine now we sell an engine plus an after treatment uh, cummins already has relationships to uh, produce the transmission. Uh, Cummins uh, recently acquired a company called Meritor, right. which is also into access. Right. So we believe that we can integrate all of these solutions and provide our customers a great deal of uh, value from an efficiency uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. And so that is going to uh, help, help us grow. We also see a lot of opportunities from an export market perspective. Okay. Cummins has three major uh, manufacturing hubs around the world, okay. one in North America, one in China and the third in India. And with all the geopolitical uh, uh, tensions uh, around the world, uh, India is certainly emerging as a good backup uh, solution for some of those uh, markets. And with the abundant clean energy uh, that's going to be available uh, in India, we see a lot of opportunities for growth in the future in the hydrogen uh, and the electrification space right. as well. Right. So pretty much everything India wants to do mm. in setting up infrastructure, in growing the scale of our economy, in mm. becoming that 3 trillion and then 5 trillion right. kind of economy, mm. every part of that growth mm. needs infrastructure set up sure. and Cummins plays a role in that. So right. there are lots of opportunities for Cummins as we uh, move forward in the future. Right. Right. Is it safe to understand, uh, you know, sort of uh, assume that you are going to take that platform slash system approach when it comes to your uh, business moving from ICs to electrification? Yes, that's that's certainly true because Cummins is a hundred year old company right. and we have been working with many of our partners and customers for a very, very long time. So we understand their market, we understand their applications, we understand that we are in a business where uh, customers only choose us because we have 
innovative products sure. which provide them greater value and sure. these products are very dependable mm -hmm. which means they need to run 24 by 7 uh, livelihood depends on these uh, these equipment uh, and machines working mm -hmm. and so we have always focused uh, our attention to keep creating products which meet those meet kinds those of requirements. Kind of requirements and which is why uh, we feel we need to uh, go into platforms where we can completely support our customers. Got it, got it. So from an India business perspective, Mr. Ram, what is the kind of contribution that India is making to commerce globally and how do you see this growing in the coming years? Yeah, as of as of today, the, the Cummins uh, India uh, business is roughly about uh, uh, 5 to 7 percent of Cummins' global business. Okay. Right. And our ambition certainly is to take that up first to hit 10 percent and then, uh, you know, our ultimate ambition is to be at least a 20 percent player in the overall scheme of uh, Okay. what Cummins does worldwide. And what would that, you know, what would you need to do to reach the 20 percent? So uh, Cummins has an ambition that by, uh, um, by uh, 2035, between 2035 and 2040 to become a 50 billion dollar business. Okay. And with that we have an ambition in India to then become somewhere between a 7 to 10 billion dollar uh, organization in okay. India. Okay. And how is, how is Cummins sort of growing its capabilities from a tech perspective? today, uh, you know, particularly when we're looking at the future of mobility, the new challenges coming up, how are you growing your uh, team within India? Yeah, so uh, Cummins uh, has over the last 10 years invested close to a billion dollars uh, in India and it has, those investor investments are in three major areas. Uh, the first one is of course infrastructure, factories sure. and buildings and uh, uh, scale. Uh, the second is in technology. Uh, we have one of the largest tech centers for Cummins is are, are located in India. Right. We already have close to 2500 engineers doing work in India and 70% of the work they do is not for projects within India but for projects around the world. So okay. they are exposed to all the cutting edge technology, they are learning them, they are de developing them and so uh, we are developing capability and scale of uh, mass scale engineering development and the third of course is the the people talent so we are developing people uh, the India organization has a little over 12,000 uh, people in okay. our group right. and uh, those are being upskilled more are being added in uh, mm -hmm. that's all being scaled up so with these kinds of investments that we have been making in infrastructure people and technology we believe we are uh, rightly placed to keep uh, expanding and growing and being ready for for future technologies. Any fresh investments that you're lining up? Uh, we are looking at, uh, since we have made so many investments over the last 10 years and we are in a little bit of a catch-up mode with the market. Right. So I think the sh in the short term we won't be making very major expansions in the existing legacy businesses okay. but certainly we are looking at new investments in the space of hydrogen, okay. in the space of uh, batteries and the electronic uh, components and also in the hydrogen ecosystem and infrastructure. Okay. So those are probably areas where uh, we would be uh, making some investments so shortly. Okay. And your expectations for the coming year? Sir? I'm, I'm uh, cautiously optimistic. Uh -huh. uh, I think uh, if we can continue to grow the GDP at this 7 to 9 percent kind of rate, I think uh, the next uh, 10 years will be good for India. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for Lovely speaking. talking to you.